Growing up in Minnesota, Jeff Jakaitis latched onto hockey at an early age through early morning practices, countless hours on the road for tournaments, and mounting expenses that arrive with being a goalie. Jeff quickly grew an admiration for his parents and their countless sacrifices to help him chase his dream. I'm, I was uh, was really lucky growing up. I, I always had uh, you know anything I could want, anything I could need. Uh, my parents were hugely supportive of uh, you know taking time off from work, uh, getting us equipment paying for hotels when we had to go to weekend tournaments uh, you know it's uh, hockey's an expensive sport when you're growing up and 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 I my parents never made me feel that burden it was you know when I wanted to play on summer teams when we had to travel to Canada or you know wherever it may be it was never well we can't do this uh, you know it's too expensive it was always yep absolutely like let's go and um, you know, they're, they're just, uh, they were hugely supportive of, of, you know, hockey was kind of my thing growing up, and, and uh, I think they recognized that and, and did everything they could to support that. And, and for me, it's, uh, you know, it was great. It was, uh, I wouldn't be here today without, you know, the support that they had given me. And um, with his parents' love and support, Jeff earned an invitation to Lake Superior State University after his successful days in the state of hockey. As the final curtain drew near on his senior season and an uncertain path stretched in front of him, Jeff learned that his mother, who all his life he's viewed as a superhero, was battling breast cancer. Kind of a strange scenario for me. I was, uh, towards the end of my senior year, uh, we were kind of winding down our hockey season and, uh, and went on a little bit of a run. Uh, uh, my dad, usually when I got into college, I went to school about uh, nine or ten hours from where I grew up in Minnesota. And, and it, uh, I think my parents would, would come to games when they had an opportunity, when they could get time off work, and, and they would always drive everywhere. And uh, I think it got to be something that they kind of would bond over. You know, they would have eight, nine hours in the car by themselves. and. They kind of made a rule that they they weren't allowed to listen to the radio. They had to talk to each other. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I think it was a really good thing for them, and I, and I think they, you know, they bonded on those trips and and really enjoyed and looked forward to those. And um, uh, so towards the end of my senior year, I was kind of, uh, you know, I didn't know if hockey was something that I would if I would play after my senior year of college or not. If I would have those opportunities, and uh, so my dad. I think ended up making the last like six or seven weekends straight um, and he was coming by himself and, and I, I thought that was kind of strange um, you know they had told me that uh, it would uh, that my mom just couldn't get the time off work had been taking off a lot of time and um, uh, so for I didn't really think twice about it you know I, I thought it was a little bit strange but I didn't think any more of it and uh, we ended up extending our season a couple weekends longer than expected, and uh, my senior year had made it to uh, to the final four of our league in Joe Lewis, and uh, my mom finally came and, and made that trip, and um, that ended up being the last weekend of college hockey for me, and, and I was really thankful. Uh, you know, it, it was a pretty emotional weekend for all of us. Uh, you know, my parents and I, it was kind of... Uh, like you said, the, you go to the 5.30 a.m. practices when you're eight, nine years old, and then, you know, now I'm fast forward 20, uh, 24, I think 23, 24 years old, I think 23 at the time. Uh, uh, you know, you've put in a lot of time and you've shared a lot of trips and, and not knowing if there's going to be any more. It was, it was an emotional weekend, and, and I think, uh, you know, not knowing what was going on behind the scenes uh, I think it was even a little bit more emotional for them that they were all there because uh, a couple weeks later I, I found out that uh, basically about the diagnosis, the reason my mom hadn't been making the trips with my dad is that she wasn't feeling well, she was having some, some trips in and out of the hospital and um, they didn't want to, anytime you hear the word cancer I think everyone kind of, your immediate reaction is panic. You know, it's it's something that carries a lot of weight, and um, it's affected a lot of people. And and uh, I think that was something they were kind of scared to tell me because they were afraid of how I would react to it. Um, 
and, and again, you know, when I did find out a couple of weeks later, that was my reaction was, you know, as a kid, you feel like your parents are invincible, you know, like, like nothing, they can walk on water and, and to find out that, you know, one of your parents is, is kind of going to be in, in a fight for their life. Uh, when you hear, you know, the word cancer, it's, uh, it scares you a lot. Um, and so that was kind of how I found out. I found out a little bit later and, uh, in my mom's case, she's she's very strong and and can be very stubborn and uh, doesn't really. She's never been uh, enthusiastic about getting checkups and going to the hospital. Um, my parents are both, uh, you know, they're they're old school. They just uh, you know kind of grit your teeth and deal with it, rub some dirt on it, and and go with it. You know, that's that's the way they are. And and uh, in my mom's case, she had had some other issues that kind of she ended up getting hospitalized and and when she went there the doctor said hey listen like you haven't done this test you haven't had this test in a decade and uh the doctor more or less forced her to to get some of these tests and uh and it really we lucked out because because of those tests and because of that uh you know the other issue that she had to deal with um they found uh, they they basically found uh, the lump and, and found that she had uh, after some tests found that she had breast cancer and uh, you know from my understanding I think early detection is is one of the biggest keys to to surviving and to beating cancer and so you know if you can ever say you're you're lucky when cancer is involved I think in my mom's case she was very lucky that with the timing that she got these tests done and. Uh, you know, they told her that it may have been a, a year to two before she would have even, you know, found it uh, with the manual tests. Or uh, um. Now in his eighth season of an award-winning career and his third season with the South Carolina Stingrays, Guinness' new perspective is fueled by his mother's determination to beat and triumph over this terrible disease. For me, one of the toughest things was being away from home. You know, it was... Uh, um, you get updates over the phone but you don't really know what's going on and and as i mentioned my mom is uh, she's a strong lady she's she can be very stubborn and, and you know i think she attacked cancer the same way you know it's uh, she i think it at least uh, her outward persona i think it probably phased her less than any of us you know hers was just kind of well it's another thing i'm i'm gonna beat it you know it was never there was never any doubt in her mind and i think that comforted us a lot and and when i would talk to her on the phone uh, you know being away i would hear the strength in her voice and uh that she was doing well and and um you know she never likes to to have attention focused on her you know much like my dad is kind of the, like I said the guy who he just wants everyone to be happy and and my mom's the same way you know she'll put she puts everyone else before herself and and I think you know when my mom was going into surgery I was tossing around whether or not I was going to go back for the surgery and she's kind of saying no no like don't disrupt your life I'm going to be fine it's it's nothing uh, you know it's not a big issue and um, didn't want to disrupt anyone else for, for something that was going on with her. You know, it was always, she puts everyone else first and, and, um, you know, that's comforting. It was comforting for me to know how, you know, strong she is and, and her ability to fight through that was great. And, and I ended up flying home for, for the surgery and, um, it was tough, you know, like I said before, when you're a kid, you see your parents as these, you know, superheroes that, that no, nothing can harm them. And, um, you know, to see her after surgery was was tough when you see, you know, anyone that you love is, is hurting and, and um, you know, in, in that environment, just coming out of surgery, it, it was really tough and it, it really hit home for me and, and kind of made me uh, put things in perspective a little bit you know I had a lot of big decisions about if I was going to play hockey where I was going to play hockey what was going on and it really helped me to kind of put life in perspective and 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 kind of sort out you know what was important and what I really appreciated about life and and in life and um as I said earlier you know thankfully um they detected it really early and, and everything was successful and um 
she's been uh, coming up uh, this uh, this February uh, actually right around Valentine's Day she'll be uh, cancer free for eight years so this month, as the Stingrays celebrate their ninth annual Pink in the Rink to fight breast cancer in the Low Country at the North Charleston Coliseum, Jakaitis will pull over his pink jersey in honor and admiration of his mother's eighth year anniversary overcoming breast cancer. You know, I, I still to this day remember standing in the recovering room when she came out of surgery, and, and that was one of the few times in my life that I just I couldn't control it. You know, I started crying, and and um. You know, yeah, it's any time that, you know, you, you kind of have a scare in, in your parents' lives or, or anyone that you love or care about in your life, it's, uh, you know, it's an emotional time. And, and I think to, you know, the feeling of gratitude for me that she, you know, they were able to detect it early, which I think is, is so important. And, um, you know, it, that is is huge, you know, the, the sequence of events that came together to to get her in early, to get the tests and, and the treatment that we had, uh, you know, we have great, a great care system in my hometown and, uh, you know, a lot of families are, are uprooted and have to go, you know, move hours away for treatments and, uh, you know, we've done some work with uh, at different places in town here of, you know, families who travel around the world and, um, you know, a, a little kid that I've gotten to be good friends with Hayden, their family goes, drives to Maryland every other weekend for treatments. And, um, you know, there's a lot of things to be thankful for in my mom's case. And, and I think, you know, for our entire family, the fact that she's still here and, and uh, you know, can still share in this adventure. I'm just, I'm so grateful for the, for the sequence of events that came together to allow that to happen. And, um, you know, having these games every year and, and taking some time to reflect on it, I think is uh, is important. You know, it really puts life in perspective. So.